Okay, so this video is going to have very boring visual effects for you. So hopefully you can maintain your attention on what it is we're talking about and take notes. There are going to be no pictures. Um, but this chapter, chapter four that you are reading for this week, uh, dovetails nicely with our transition into watching Welcome to Saniton and the um, videos that I'm posting on, um, on that web series. And so we're going to be focusing in this video on interactivity and how interactivity is one of the most defining characteristics of digital storytelling. Um, and as Miller says in the first page of the chapter, which is page 57, that it is interactivity that makes digital media such a completely different animal from traditional storytelling forms like movies, television, and novels. So... Um, and as she goes on to point out, is that all stories, again, have these universal qualities of having a narrative, of having drama, of having characters, but what makes digital storytelling so special is the way that it gets the users, um, they, it changes their role from being something passive, where you sit back and you watch a story, or you read a story and experience how it unfolds in front of you, to actually participating. In the story itself and um, that's that's something that's very special but also can be very problematic so on page 58 she goes on to say essentially interactivity is one of only two possible ways of relating to narrative content the other way is to relate to it passively if you're passively enjoying a form of entertainment you are doing nothing more than watching listening or reading though you might also be making connections in your mind or questioning something about the story but with interactive content, you actually become a participant. And in robust works, your input, input can have an impact on how the story unfolds or ends. This is radically different from the way narratives have traditionally been experienced. So she goes on to, to basically make a, an analogy that interactivity is a conversation between the user and the content. And of course, this is radically different than how we normally um, have participated with or, or passively engaged with films or novels where we, we turn to them specifically as a place to go and relax and be entertained. Now we have to actually be engaged and think um, in complex ways about how we can contribute to the game or how we can contribute to the narrative. And I like how she points to at the bottom of page 58 and the top of page 59 that you can normally tell the difference between the two forms because when you're passively engaged in, in some entertainment, you'll be sitting back on your chair or maybe even laying down on the couch or laying down on your bed while you consume that narrative. But when you're actively engaged, when there is interactivity, you tend to actually be leaning forward in your chair, you tend not to be laying down, um, and you're also using something such as a keyboard or um, a mouse or a touch screen that helps you to actually interact with and navigate your way around the narrative. So um, I also want to draw your attention to the last paragraph in the section, What Happens to the Audience, on page 59, where she breaks down some of the terms that we use when talking about interactive um, narratives. So she makes it very clear that when referring to someone who's playing a video game, we'll say player or gamer. Um, if we're talking about the web, we'll talk about vis visitors, or if it's an immersive environment, you may say a participant. But all of these different individual terms or terminology fit under the larger umbrella of user. And I will be using the term user in the next two videos that um, accompany this week's reading assignments. So, what are what are some of the big deals about interactivity? Again, on page 59, um, Miller points out that we have choice and control. And the, the user's ability to control aspects of the narrative is called agency. So basically what that means is that you have an impact on your environment. You have the ability to affect um, portions of the story, and that means that you have agency. So instead of being somebody who is simply subjected to a narrative, once you become a user, 
you become involved and you become one of the authors of the text. So, um, so the fact that we have these choices is important because if the other users in a narrative don't contribute in a meaningful way to the narrative, that can ne negatively impact the way that we perceive the entire product. And so if you see that there's interactivity that's going on in a narrative that doesn't necessarily contribute in productive ways, then you're going to dislike the original product um, because of the impact of the user's contributions. And I'm going to be talking about that more specifically in relation to Welcome to Sanditon. Um, so interactive entertainment is immersive, and that's a word that we're going to use a lot over and over again, immersive. And the reason why it is immersive is that it involves you as a user in ways that are never really afforded to you as a passive um, consumer of entertainment. And a lot of times this immersiveness is multi-sensory. Um, so it'll involve you reflecting on and engaging with different parts of your senses. So your sight, your ears, your sense of taste, your sense of touch, um, and your sense of smell. So immersive environments are not just things that we watch or that we read and we think about, but that involves all of our senses, or at least several of them. Now, there are different kinds of interactivity, um, and they, they fall along a wide scale range of, of being completely passive to being completely interactive and active. And so she starts on page 63 to outline the six basic types of interactivity that can be found in almost every type of digital storytelling. And I do want you to spend some time reading through this list and thinking about examples that you can cite from various types of entertainment that you use on a, on a regular basis that might fall underneath this. So the first of the six basic types of interactivity is stimulus and response. And um, we go through stimulus and response over and over again, especially with hyperlinks that we see in our websites um, to things that are more maybe attached to sort of a game-like quality where you know you're playing a game and you see an object that your character is supposed to pick up and you know that if you go over there and click on it or highlight it or, or walk over it that um, that then something will happen within the, the narrative and it'll maybe get you access to something else. Also we have navigation. Navigation is really important because navigation is what shows us what we are able to do within a particular website. I guess I will show you um, our website here in WordPress. Um, our navigation is basically what keeps us organized, and I'm going to keep trying to follow through on maintaining our navigation so that it's something that when users come to our website, they know where to go and what to do. Um, I'm going to be making drop down, I'm going to be complicating the drop down menus here within the next week or so. But here we know if we click on about, hopefully we get some information about this website. I'll be adding that later as we add tags and stuff. Um, but also here, you know, if you want to see Santa by Jane Austen, you know where to go. If you want need to clean stuff up, you know where to go. Again, there are people who still have stuff here that needs to be cleaned up. Oh, there's new stuff. Great. So I can tell who is not listening to my videos because every week I say, clean this up. So C. Forino, S. Bernier, Kayla Locklear, Shauna Van Campen, Franzi, again, Olivia Rod Rodigan, um, Austin Terry, etc. You guys need to come in here and clean up your stuff. I've explained this several times. Oh good, most of the deadly sins are gone. So that is a good thing. Oh wait, no, there's just older posts here. The deadly sounds are still here. So some people are a month behind in cleaning up what I've asked them to clean up, watch the videos. Um, to go back to what we were talking about with Miller's assignment for this week, we also have control over objects where you can control virtual objects, communication. 
can communicate with other characters, exchange of information, and acquisition. So again, read through this list and then also read through her list of examples that continue on page 64 and 65. This will help you with your homework assignment for this week. Um, and she also gives a couple very interesting examples of how this can play out not just online but in real life and I think that these examples are, are extremely important because again with digital storytelling with transmedia storytelling um, we're telling stories that are digital but we also involve components from real life we can see examples of how these terms work out in real life and I think that the examples that she gives from the book of Genesis in the Bible as well as a um, event that she attended in real life that really helps to explain how these terms can work and how we can use them as we go forward. Now as she progresses in the in the chapter um, Miller keeps bringing our attention back to the way that interactive games and narratives in general work best when there is a dynamic um, sense of opposition between components of the story. And I want you to be thinking about this because as we move forward, your final project for the term will be to create your own digital, um, potentially interactive stories. And um, you're going to be outlining how, what you can do um, with some of the skills that we're practicing as we progress, and also what you would like to do if you can, as you move along um, in your career and as you gain skills and other kinds of applications and platforms um, that you could add to it and maybe even add some real life components. So I want you to be thinking about that opposition and also thinking about it and how it relates to Welcome to Sanditon because the central crux of the Welcome to Sanditon um, narrative is that there is this conflict between not just the private business and the public government, but also the conflict between um, people who are attracted to each other. And what do you do with that sense of attraction? How do you resolve your sense of attraction in a way that is productive and um, productive and satisfactory to all of the people who are involved? We also have conflict between our brother and sister duo. They're fighting over their competing spin cycle um, shops. So. Do be thinking about that. Okay, so make sure you read the chapter carefully um, again, because I know you have already read it before you watch this video, read through it carefully again, and be making connections between not just what's in the chapter and the information that you get here, but between that and the other um, narrative components that we're looking on this week. Welcome to Sanitan. That will help you get ready for mentally the assignment um, of which you're going to be asked to contribute to our WordPress website this week. Okay, so that is it for this video. Watch the other three videos and um, the assignment will be explained in the final video.